So as I had uh, uh, mentioned in the previous class that uh, we'll start off from very basics and the basics by basics, I mean some of the network theorems that you have already learned in previous courses, right? So how many of you have heard about substitution theorem? Okay, so I presume almost all of you. Can any of you tell me what substitution theorem is? I mean, in any language you prefer, doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the exact pristine substitution theorem language. Right, so essentially if I rephrase what you said, sometimes you can, uh, you can take any element of the circuit and replace it with some equivalent, uh, some voltage source and current source, and nothing changes in the circuit, right? That's what essentially what you're trying to say if I gather right, right? Okay, right. So uh, that's in fact correct. So let me let me uh, rephrase it in a certain way and then I'll, uh, then I'll get to um, uh, where I want to. So let's say I have a, I have a network. It has, R, L, C, some sort of nonlinearity. I don't know what type of transistors, uh, cathode ray tubes, something. I mean, uh, things that we might not even have heard about. You have it have all types of electrical parameters inside, right? So let's say I took one of them out, right? I took one of these electrical components out. Okay. Uh, let me call this E. It's a nonlinear element. It need not be linear, it need not be time variant, time invariant. We can have, it doesn't matter what type of element is this. What substitution theorem is telling us is, is that if at any point of time, I see a voltage or across time, I see a voltage, uh, B, let's say I call this terminal A, I call it terminal B. And if I, at any point of time, I see a voltage VAB, and let's say I have a current through this, which is IAB, right? So what substitution theorem is telling us is that I can replace this element E with either a current source IAB This is the same stuff inside, nothing changed. Or I can replace this with a voltage source of value VAB and nothing will change what is happening inside. Right? I'm pretty sure you have heard about this. Right? Make sense? Right? So, uh, so this is an extremely powerful theorem. This is an extremely powerful theorem because it doesn't put any constraint on the type of the element. It can be linear, it can be nonlinear, it can be time variant, it can be time invariant. It doesn't really matter, right? And and the proof is uh, proof is pretty uh, pretty neat and pretty simple. Since it will not take too much time, let me show you the proof also. And the, hopefully, then you will be able to appreciate and use it in a different context somewhere else. So, so what this is saying is, if I take this example, uh, so, so the current through this terminal is IAB in the direction I showed. The current through this piece of wire is IAB in the direction going into the box, right? So, so what happens if I, let's say, add a current source of value zero to this node, right? Does anything change anywhere? No, right? I haven't essentially disturbed the circuit, right? Uh, it's like adding, a, adding zero current means not doing anything, right? So, so that's good. So the, now zero current can be, can be uh, can be thought of in multiple ways. Zero current can be thought of as splitting the current source into two parts. Let's say in one case, uh, I am taking a current out and I am pushing a current in. 
this current, let's say, is exactly equal to IAB, and this current source is also exactly equal to IAB. Right? Are you convinced that this is a zero current added to the network? So nothing, no change, nothing, nothing will happen to the network. Okay, great. So I can do the same thing on the right hand side also. So I can I can add or I can take away current IAB and I can push in current IAB. No change done, right? Great. So now you can see where I'm going with this, right? So, so, so now can you comment on if I take this piece of short, right? Can you comment what is the current that is flowing through the short? Zero, right? Do you see that it's zero? Because ultimately, uh, whatever this current will be, this will flow flow out, right? And whatever this current is going in is still flowing in this direction, correct? So essentially, the current to the short is zero. If the current to the short is zero, the short is not necessary. I can, that piece of wire is not necessary. I can get rid of this. Similarly, I can get rid of the piece of wire from the other side also. Right? So, so this part of the network is no longer a part of the original network. I take it out. And the beauty about current sources are, what happens to a current source? Let's say I have an ideal current source. These are all ideal current sources for the purpose of our analysis. So let's say I have a current source, any generic current source. Right, so let's say I1, and let's say I fix, I, I say that the terminal voltages are V1. I mean, the voltage difference between the two terminals is V1. Can you comment on the strength of the current source or strength of, yeah, I mean, the amount of current the source is pushing if I change this value V1? Very trivial question. I mean, no trick question. Just wanted to see, see where I wait. I change the value of V1, will I1 change? No or yes? No, right? It's a source, right? That's what it means, right? It's a source. It's independent. It's not depending on the voltage across it, right? So good. So, so I1 will not change. So we don't have to bother about it, which essentially means that I, if, I, if, I, if I do anything, if I do anything with these voltages, right, the one that I have marked with red, I tie it to any node, I do anything with the voltages, those currents IV is not going to change. Right? Okay, that's good, which essentially means that I can tie them together. Correct? Which essentially means that this current is now flowing in this loop. Okay. So now can I further simplify this? Can I say that there are two current sources of exactly the same value in series? Can I replace them with a single current source of the same value? Yes, I can, right? So great, which means that I can get rid of this guy. And push IAB. Right? So this essentially is substitution theorem. Right? So, uh, so this essentially means that Regardless of any element that you have in the system, if you know the voltage, I mean, I showed you with respect to current, but you can also show the same thing with respect to voltage. I'm not going to prove that right now. Uh, so essentially what the substitution theorem is telling us is, regardless of any element that you have, if you know the voltage across it or the current through it with some amount of, I mean, with exact amount of certainty, then you would you will be you can replace that element with that voltage source or that current source that you know, and nothing else in the circuit is going to change. This nothing else statement is important because you are changing something in the circuit, right? You are changing, you are replacing an element with something completely different. You are replacing an element with a with a voltage source or a current source. It means something has changed, but rest of the circuit is not going to experience anything, right? 
So rest of the circuit is not going to experience any change. That's what a substitution theorem is, is telling us. Now, one might say that this is probably a very neat trick to uh, do some circuit design puzzles. But I'll show you that it's not only a neat trick, it has profound implications. And one of the implications is in the is the way we come up with Kevin theorem and Norton theorem. Are you guys aware of the proof of Kevin theorem? You're aware? So good. So then I should not spend more time on this. I'll be able to convince you quickly as to uh, why Thevenin theorems work. So I'll, I'll do the proof, but yes. Okay. So then let me spend some time. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for stopping. Uh, so let's say I have a, let's say I have a network. And uh, network, the network has bunch of voltage sources, current sources, and uh, all linear elements, right? I, I'm making the distinction that is linear. It's no, I'm not saying that it can be nonlinear, right? I'm making the distinction that is linear, right? So, and let's say the network has a terminal, right? A port that comes out, and I call this port AB. So, so what does the statement of Thevenin theorem say? The statement essentially says that if I connect a resistor here, I mean it doesn't, it's not uh, limited to resistor, but let's let's limit it, limit us to resistors right now. If I connect a resistor RL here, so even before going there, can you tell me that? Let's say I connect this. I, I connect. I, I take this uh, box. It has some uh, sources and resistances and whatnot inside. I'll be observing some voltage here, right? Okay. So I'll be observing some voltage here and let, let's call this voltage an open circuit voltage because nothing is connected at this stage to the, uh, to the, to the port, right? So, so let's call this VAB, uh, let's call this VOC, V open circuit will be VAB when under open circuit condition. Okay. And now, can you tell me what is going to happen if I take the same thing and connect an RL? Will firstly, first thing first, will the voltage change? It's likely to change. It's likely to change. Why? Some current will flow, right? Great. Some current will flow. So some current will flow. So let's say I call this IL. So again, a very stupid question, but why is it that voltage change in current flow? Across? Across RL. Or across, uh, when it comes to inside of the circuit, there will be some, some drop. Ah, right, excellent. So what his point is, it's quite possible that there is probably some resistance in the path which was not getting triggered earlier because there was no current, right? But now current is flowing, there can be a drop across that same resistance, right? So there can be a, some, some amount of drop. Excellent. So now, so that is that is an intuitive way of thinking. That's good. Now, my question is, let's say I tell you that I don't have this RL. I put in a current source of value IL. How, how are you going to figure out? So by the way, when I when I replace that R1 with the IL, which theorem did I use? Substitution theorem, right? So nothing else could change because it was earlier also taking current IL, right? I am still taking current IL. So now can you tell me how are you going to figure out what will be this voltage VAB now? Again, I'm using a genetic network. You cannot really give me an exact answer. I'm trying to get that approve your thought process. Right? What is potential difference across current source? Correct. But how wh what framework will you use to uh, to to get to this answer? Right? 
right? So again, this is about design thinking, right? Normally, when you analyze this, you know that if the question has five variables and five, it must be having five equations, right? So in design, those those assumptions are not there. You can have five variables and fifteen equations. Right, and you can have fifteen variables and five equations. Right, I mean sometimes you feel that it's not not possible. Then we take approximation. Right? So it's not as if multiple choice. Right, you have an infinite choice. There can be multiple right answers. So 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 tell me. I'm sure you know this. If I take this problem down for you, all of you will be able to tell me. But even before I take the problem down, can you walk me through your thought process as to how can I figure out what is the end? But I came from the register to the third. So I don't want to go back. Right? So let me let me simplify this further. So let's say that I uh, I get rid of the sources inside. So this box has voltage sources, current sources, and so on, right? So let's say I open all the voltage uh, open all the current sources, right? And I short all the voltage sources, right? So so I get rid of them. So by getting rid of mean, I what essentially mean is since you had a current source, I opened them. Since you had a voltage source, I shorted them. Right? So now, can you tell me whether this voltage VAB is zero or non zero? It should be non zero because I still have a source IL. Right? But note that this IL is, is I'm not using much fusion at this level. So I came to IL from the previous. Uh, when, when, uh, from the previous condition, where I had all the voltages and the current sources inside, but I'm retaining the value of IL for the purpose of the next step, right? So since I have an IL, VAB will not be zero. So what information about the network do you need to find out what VAB is? R. R. What is R? Right. So what we call that R? Equivalent resistance. Right. So ultimately, we are looking for an equivalent resistance of the network. Right again for the for the purpose of this course, finding out equivalent resistance extremely useful. We will be doing it throughout the course. So I'm sure you have done it in 200, right? Finding equivalent resistances and some part of the institution zero one. Please go back and revise how to find equivalent resistance. Right. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that from the next class also. How we can figure the resistance equivalent? How can you tell it when this is a constant? We can figure it because when you say constant, you mean constant with respect to time or what? Uh, time and with respect to time. Ah, okay. Good question. So I, I'll spend no time on that tomorrow. But for the purpose of this, since nothing in this network is changing with respect to time, right? So inside this network, I think it's with respect to time. So I don't expect the resistance. It is a property of the network to change with that. Right? So that is number one. And number two, your question was, what about the IV characteristics? Now, if I give an IV characteristic, how do you find out the resistance? That is slope, right? So you can be anywhere in the IV characteristic, but the slope doesn't change because everything is linear. Right? So the resistance doesn't change. Right? Next question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll stop here.